morning guys it's six o'clock I just got up um, making some coffee and I'm getting ready for work because just because I live in a school bus doesn't mean I don't have a job Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Carrie. And we live in a 40-foot uh, school bus named Bussy McBusface. The thing that's different about us from maybe other people who live in schoolies is that we don't have a remote income. Mike is still working at his regular full-time job. I work as a paramedic, and for some of the same reasons I live in a schoolie, I like being a paramedic. So for now, I go to work as a paramedic, and we still live in our schoolie. So we wanted to kind of discuss some of the things that uh, uh, some of the advantages and disadvantages. I think the important thing is that we didn't let this stop us from building a bus even though we knew that Mike would still have to remain working for a while. Yeah. We built the bus anyway, we moved in anyway, and then we're just going to see what comes from this. So this video we wanted to put out because we kind of wanted to show you what our life is like as well as some of the again the advantages and disadvantages of living this way and if it may be right or wrong for you. Okay, so if you're watching from somewhere really far away, we just want to show you on the map where Arizona is in the United States. We're this bright blue state down here all the way on the border of Mexico. And we live in Wilcox, which is way down here in the southeastern corner of Arizona. So our home base is Wilcox, Arizona, where Mike works. And then we go to different locations from there. The first location we're showing you is the pond where we saw the migrating sandhill cranes. Yes, and that's about five minutes from work. Maybe 10. No, it's, uh, okay, I get it. maybe 10, maybe 10. Next place is the Wilcox Playa Wildlife Viewing Area, and that's another, that's also about 10 minutes to work. Oh yeah, that's the one that was 10 minutes. Maybe I was saying it wrong the first time. Maybe the first one yeah, was The first one was five. very close, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I messed up there. Um, the next location, I think, is our favorite location. Nope, this is Stockton nope. Pass. Oh, and the next location is Stockton Pass. That's about a f almost an hour, 45 minutes to an hour of driving to get there. That's, that one's a little bit further, but every place has its own little advantages. Oh yeah, little different perks and, and things. And okay, then what's next? Next place, um, uh, oh, this is Indian Bread Rocks. That's where we are right now. And this is what I was saying is our favorite location. We've camped here at least three times now. We yeah. keep coming back because we love it yeah. so much. This one's also about a, a 35 minute drive to work. Yeah, that's not bad. And then the furthest place we go is the next one. But also, like there's reasons we go to these spots. Like this one here has the most remarkable overlook. Yeah, it's this, so beautiful. It's worth is, the drive. This is at the foot of Mount Graham and it's overlooking the Gila River Valley. So it's really beautiful. And that's probably like a 55 minute drive right there, but oh. it's well worth it. It's, it's far. I didn't realize it was that long. Mm -hmm. That's, that's pretty far. So, so that kind of gives you an idea of the ranges I drive and it brings up some interesting like problems. Like when I go to a new place, I have to set my alarm to get up at a different time. Um, the drive times are obviously different. Yeah, anywhere uh, from like 5 to 55 minutes. Yeah, so, you know, that's something you'll have to think about it when you're doing this as well. Because we have to move around every, let's just say 14 days. That's the average is we have to, we can stay 14 days. And so, most of the places where we stay. Right, so on those, on those periods of time, you know, we just get used to being there for 14 days. It's really nice. But then moving day comes and we start over again by living in a new spot. So, but each place has its perks and it's, they're all really neat places to stay. So we don't yeah. complain about any of them. Some are just more convenient. Yeah. One of the things you have to keep in mind if you're going to do this is that you need another vehicle to get to work and back while you're leaving your bus parked at your cool campsite. Unless you have a small bus. And but then the other side of this is that you have, if you do have a second vehicle and you don't have a carry, then you have to leave your bus alone. And so, you know, that gets into security. Our bus, we have ample security. Like we have 360, you can't get close to our bus without us knowing. Lights like, are coming on, cameras are recording it the whole time. Like, yeah, like even if we're far away, I get an alert on my phone saying someone's there. We're recording you. 
<laughs> you might make the video, probably not in the way you wanted to, and some sheriffs might see it too. So you may not want to be that guy. But yeah, we have like ample security. But if you don't, and you're going to be going out, you might want to think about those things before you uh, leave your bus out in a remote place like this. Yeah. I leave Carrie here. Carrie's more capable of taking care of herself and protecting herself, as well as the bus is very secure. The doors always stay locked. They lock automatically when they close, blah, 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 blah. So I feel comfortable leaving here. And we're also surrounded by other campers. So that might be an option for you too, is you know, talk to your neighbor. Hey, you know, if you trust them. Um, hey, I'm going to be going to work. Just can you keep an eye out on my bus? If you see someone hanging out on my bus and it's not me, they're probably not supposed to be there. You know, yeah. something like that might cover you a little bit. Yeah. Just a few things to think about if you're going to try on this lifestyle for size. Yeah, it's different. It's different. And this now we're going to get into some of the advantages and disadvantages of, of being in the bus. Exactly. So, um, and the first one, honestly, is having to stay here in this area. So the, the first disadvantage. Yeah, first disadvantage. Is, is that we are pinned down to staying within driving distance of Wilcox. So yeah. we don't get to just be on the open road traveling like some other people. Yeah. And you know, yeah, we could park some you know further away. There's some other really great spots, but that, you know, that increases the driving time fairly substantially at times. So is it you know, you have to yeah, we weigh those options when we find places to park. And uh so, but at the same time, we're also envious of those who get to drive around. And that gets back to when we first uh, built the bus. Why we built the bus was to include adventure into our life. The same reason I'm a paramedic. I like the adventure as part of being, you know, on the road and helping people yeah. and stuff like that. And that's pretty much our next um, advantage that we want to list. We're going to go disadvantage advantage here. Right. So the advantage we would want to list is that on your days off, you're parked at the trailhead you're like in the adventure zone already you can go and do whatever you want to do and have the fun that you are wanting to have in your life yeah like just even waking up in the morning and coming out here and sitting down and drinking a cup of coffee and looking out the window like you have this fantastic view that you probably don't have in your house unless you're mega rich or you you know have this cool cabin with an awesome view yeah but it'll never change <laughs> no, this is really neat to wake up to. And it's, it just gets your wheels turning and you want to go out there and do something fun and adventurous. It does. It just it, it uh, lends itself to exercise a lot just because you step Definitely. out the front door and you, you walk and you're just already heading into adventure straight out of the front yeah. of your house. Yeah, we're it's, like, let's go walk up and explore that little cave we saw or whatever, you know? Just last night, we were just like, you know, because we were doing stuff all day and st stuff was just busy. And then we were like, you want to go for a walk? Yeah, let's go for a walk. And we ended up taking this little adventure. And, and from the time we stepped out the door to the time the adventure started was the first step. And that's cool. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. Instant adventure. All right. So back to another disadvantage. You are limited to the area you can boondock in a gigantic bus like this. We, uh, this was something we actually thought about when we built our bus. That's why we were able to get away with something this big. We're 40 foot Bluebird school bus. So... We can, we have lots of places to park it. We live in Southern Arizona, BLM land, national forest land, dispersed camping. It's everywhere around here. Yeah, so we're we, so <laughs> zero shortages of places to park. We're so here. socially distanced, you guys. We're like naturally socially distanced living in Arizona. Okay. Yeah. Small population, wide open spaces, aside from like the metropolitan area around Phoenix. Yeah. The rest of the state is wide open. Yeah. Huge. Supreme. So if you live in LA and you're building a 40 foot school bus somehow, I don't even know where you'd build it in LA, but if you live in LA and you're building a, you know, school bus, expect to park far away from this because in our in our uh, um, examinations of places to park in California, they're kind of few and far between in the places that you would want to park, and so you really have to consider that before you jump into something of this magnitude here. Maybe if you know if you had a short school bus like an eight window or something like that, you, a van, you know, that might be far easier for you than trying to do something like this so keep that in mind if you are, intend to work this kind of lifestyle full-time and live in a bus off-grid okay okay so back to another advantage oh yeah it is the coolest thing getting off work and knowing I'm driving back to a campground somewhere or you know this this dispersed camping is what it is I'm driving to a campground to my house 
Like That's who does cool. that? It is. I come home and the first when I first turn a corner or whatever, and I can see the bus for the first time. Like I'm just excited. I'm like, oh man, that thing's cool, you know. And realizing like it's paid off. <laughs> you know, yeah. we live in that thing, and and the surroundings. I can see it in the perspective of where it's parked in its setting and it's so cool so that's a huge yeah there's advantage. just these little slices of joy that come along with this that mike has been really appreciating yeah okay back to another disadvantage one thing that may or may not be a disadvantage for you is that you might need to be showering more frequently if you're working a regular full-time job right so it depends on what kind of a setup you have in your bus or whatever you're living in. Can you shower frequently? Do you have enough water? Do you have a way to bring more water maybe back to your bus to make sure that you're showering frequently enough for work? Or is there a Planet Fitness near work that you can go to? These are the right. things I guess you would need to um, figure out if this was going to work for you. We knew coming into the bus that I was going to be working. And we're not saying we're going to do this forever, but for now, I, I'm working full time. And so we have a separate vehicle and that really helps. And that also helps because well, going back to the last point, I have a shower at work. So I go to work in the morning. I take a shower before I start work. And then that saves water here. This beard has to do with saving water, the hair, because I was shaving. All that was to save water. So this wasn't like this new look, though the ladies seem to like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the George Clooney look. Yeah, everybody says I look like George Clooney. Which is so funny because years ago when I was into it, I made this dream board, a giant poster dream board for my wall, and it had a picture of George Clooney drinking coffee on it right next to a picture of a woman in a beautiful wedding dress. And look at me now. Talk about channeling things into your life with a dream board. <laughs> that, it's funny because back in the day, when I was, uh, I used to act in Tombstone. I've played Wyatt Earp, Ike Clanton, uh, Morgan, like a, a lot of the Cowboys. And, uh, but the guy who used to run the show, his name was Stephen Keith. And he used to, he would he just called me Clooney all the time. Hey, Clooney. See, you looked like <laughs> that even funny. back then, funny. too. I never even looked at myself that way, but. He's a handsome fella. Else. Let me right, just show ladies? You. Am I right? He's a handsome fella. Huh? Let me just show you my favorite picture. Boom. <laughs> oh, the axe picture. Yeah, the axe picture. <laughs> he loves that picture. <laughs> That's my favorite picture. Okay. Carrie took that picture. She's a good photographer. She didn't know it. Okay, so on the flip side of that disadvantage, there's another advantage, and that would be... And that would be... Sorry about the wind. It's yeah, only sorry like, about the terrible wind, boys. What was that boys. one? That was a big one. Um, um, and the advantage would be... Oh, we're able to restock our bus. And so one of the things we thought of when we built this, and maybe you should think about it too, if this is something you need to do, is make it so that the perishables on this bus um, can be pulled and refilled. For instance, like propane, you know, it's something simple that you can go get a really cool mountable propane tank. But every time that thing gets low, you have to drive your bus to go. To go fill it. Go fill it. Whereas if you have. We have two 20 pounds. We can pull one, go fill it pull the other one and go fill we have an automatic valve that switches between the two and that's advantage also water we have a way of filling water yeah so, we have a 30 gallon water bladder that might can fill up with water and bring back and pump into our water tank so these are a couple of the advantages that since he's going to work anyway he can run these little errands and take care of these little things if we need to yeah like when you go grocery shopping and you're like yeah. oh man Forgot, forgot the hey can you pick whatever. that up on the way home from work tomorrow yes so that is a huge that's actually we use that a lot so yeah it saves like, us a lot of gas money and mileage on it the does car. because we're going to use that mileage anyway so yeah okay okay so for our last two disadvantage and advantage um gosh this wind is terrible the last disadvantage i think we would list is that when you are tied down to that stationary job, you do have a huge desire to be on the road and just you want to go out and travel in your bus. So that's, I guess that's kind of a drawback to having that job that ties you down. That was extremely magnified going to Schooly Palooza this year. When we saw everybody else who had mobile income. Oh my gosh, yeah. Like talking about their different, one guy, he, he part-times on his bus, part-times at, uh, what is it? Uh, Murdo Station, I think, in Antarctica. Oh my God, that's cool. 
right. you know, or people that just have jobs where you know they can do their computer online or different things like oh my. And, or, um, wow. Wow. The wind. What was Pamela's job? Pamela, she's doing online COVID. Um, it's, she's a supervisor, supervising a bunch of people who who field calls about COVID uh, in the state of New Jersey right now. But I guess it's going to get bigger. So yeah, so, it was interesting hearing the um, different remote jobs that people are doing. There while are they were there's at a schoolie palooza. Yeah, and so that really like you're like, oh man, like these people are doing it. Why can't we do it? Yeah. So. But maybe someday we can. We don't know yet when that will be, but you know what? We have the bus ready for when that time does yeah. come. I mean, and this ultimately was an escape strategy for us from the very start. Like if we're going to go live our lives to the fullest and live our best lives, like we're going to need some way of doing that. So. Yeah. Um, okay. So one of the biggest advantages I saved for last. Income versus outflow of our cash. <laughs> when you get rid of your house, when you get rid of these all these bills and payments and stuff. Your mortgage or rent. Right. A lot of your electricity Electrical bill, bill, your gas, water, bill. water. All that stuff is so much cheaper on the road, period. Yeah. Period. Now, you could say, well, you live in a 40-foot school bus and your, your gas mileage must be horrible. We move once every 14 days. Yeah. We move between... 30 and 50 miles how many times is that a year like not very much yeah. so we don't use very much gas um surprisingly our propane usage is so tiny yeah i you know it goes i hear forever i hear a lot of people really talking about having a single fuel vehicle and they're kind of down on having propane but oh my gosh i wouldn't change it for the world that propane lasts forever, and I'm using Ever. the oven all the time for an hour, hour and a half at a time, depending on what I'm baking, and it takes forever to run Months. out of propane. Months. And it doesn't matter if it has been cloudy and overcast and raining for days, and our solar is low, or our batteries are low, it doesn't matter. You can still cook and have a hot meal because you have propane. I wouldn't change it for the world. Yeah. So, like, that... I mean, that's awesome. Our heating, we're not using propane for heat, thank God, because you really blow through propane. That is not the best bang for the buck. Oh, gotcha. Diesel heaters, the heat the bus. So, I mean, we're just not spending nearly as much as we did living in a house, just for our basic necessities. Yeah. Living in the bus has been quite a bit cheaper. We did not sit down and do this full budget. It's something we've been talking about doing. So maybe we'll in the fu a future video is do a, a solid budget video. But we are saving and putting away money, you guys, for some plans that we have in the future. You have a little yeah, tiny you, inkling. You guys already had a little bit of a hint and we're not really ready to say any more yet. But yeah, we have an idea of um, a way that we can pay off or completely get out of our debt. Yeah, completely debt free. And yeah. then that opens up some bigger doors for us. So Yeah, you know, and living sure in this bus is facilitating all of these ideas that mm -hmm. are coming to us right now. So it's pretty exciting for us. So to recap everything we said, there are some disadvantages. The moving around the distance, leaving your bus alone, uh, you know, finding places to park might be a problem for you it hasn't been a problem for us thank goodness um showering you know especially if, if you're going into work you don't want to smell like you haven't showered for five days right but if you're living in your bus and you know you may not shower for five days it's not uncommon around here so, <laughs> no you learn that you don't have to shower as often as you thought you did you'll know yeah <laughs> you know when the time is you'll right. be like i have to shower my, that was mike last yeah. night he's like um tonight is shower night for sure but yeah. we have a hundred gallons of water on board and we can refill that or restock that yeah. with our water bottle so yeah. it's never an issue for us we can shower anytime we want to advantages a lot closer to the adventure you desire um it's really cool to come home to your bus that, that sounds silly but wait until you do it and you're just like oh it's this a is big cool. deal it is uh you know, your ability to constantly keep stuff restocked. You don't have to be quite as uh, prepared to go to the store when you're, you're going to be by the store probably pretty often uh, going to work. And then our income. We our cash flow. are sustaining a lot more. We're keeping a lot more that we were just putting out for basic needs before. So right. this is pretty good stuff. Yeah, it's worth it. It's so worth it, you guys. If you are dreaming of a life like this, go ahead and take the plunge. Do whatever you have to do to make it happen and make it real. Yeah. I, I, I'll, I'll just cover this for two seconds because I think it's important. 
if you are going to do this, put the time in, you know, we enjoy living in our bus because we made it very, very comfortable for us to live here. And so the, there's not a lot of downsides in the there's, level of comfort. Yeah, there's not a lot of hardship. Yeah. It's, it's just like living in a normal house, just like your normal home, only with a better view out the windows. Yes. So if you're going to get a bus and throw a futon down and have a Coleman stove, your experience might be different. That's than what true. we're telling you okay <laughs> so and i'm not saying that's wrong i mean if you're super adventurous and you need to get out there man go then for it then throw a futon down and get that coleman stove <laughs> right. and go do it <laughs> but if you want to have a, like a real level of cover comfort then do your due diligence watch all the videos see how people are building their buses and what you want in yours what you don't what you need to have and what you don't and then uh go crazy because it is so worth it it is so good definitely so good love it we every day we're like, God, I love this place. Best fort ever. You know, it's I know. every day. We're remarking about it all the time. <laughs> yeah, it just hasn't worn off, you know, what, four, four and a half months. I know, and we're awesome. still smiling from ear to ear. Awesome. So thank you guys for watching us. We love you guys. Leave comments. If we miss something, put it in the comments down here. We'll definitely address that. We, we, we sit here and we read every comment together. So uh, if you see a little you know a little thumbs up or a heart if you get a heart it's because you said something really really cool so anyway guys thank you for watching uh we love having you guys along on the ride it's pretty cool really cool things coming trust me you won't want to miss the next few, yeah stick the, around the next few months you don't want to miss these videos it's gonna get exciting all right like and subscribe while you're there <laughs> bye you guys thank you bye bye